Sony A7 IV, Sony A7C, vlogging. Which is the best for that? Why? And what are the key differences? I'm Dave with Vares Media and maybe those are questions that you're wondering about. Well then, this video is for you. We are going to compare the key differences between the A7 IV and A7C with a focus on vlogging as well as broader video work and cinematic b-roll to help inform you which option is a better fit for your use case. Just before we start, if you enjoy the video then please like, subscribe, comment and check out the affiliate links to support the channel and help to keep it alive. And with that said, let's start with a topic highly relevant to me in my dubious position as an adult trying to learn to ride a bike stabilization. Both cameras include catalyst stabilization as an option, which uses the futuristic power of gyroscopes and Sony's free catalyst browse software to give fantastic stabilization results at the cost of a bit of extra post-production work and the need to use certain shooting settings. Full guides to Catalyst linked below. So there's no differences or advantages with that stabilization feature and Catalyst works really well for vlogging if you don't mind those workflow tweaks. Both cameras also have in-body image stabilization where the sensor moves to compensate for camera movements and give steadier footage. This can work well for static handheld shots but it's about as steady for vlogging as global energy prices so far in 2022. However, the A7C has a big advantage for in-camera stabilization options thanks to the addition of active steady shot digital stabilization. For the price of a modest crop into the image, we get much smoother footage, which is genuinely usable for vlogging, as well as very good for handheld shots in general, in a way that the built-in solutions of the A7C just aren't able to match. Full review of the A7 IV stabilization options is linked separately, but the short version is the A7 IV can offer all the stabilization capability of the A7C, plus markedly more. If you asked me what the single biggest vlogging advantage for the A7 IV is, I would say it's this. But what if you asked me, do you even lift, bro? That may be a question more relevant to vlogging than you might think. Try holding a camera at arm's length for a long ass time and you'll find it's an underrated form of isometric resistance training. That means if you vlog for any significant period of time, the weight of your camera is going to become noticeable. At 509 grams, the A7C is a significantly svelter system than the 659 gram A7 IV, which is around 30% heavier. And it's definitely something that you will feel after a little while. The A7C also has substantially smaller physical dimensions, which while not a huge difference maker on their own, might make it better when carrying space is limited. And the A7C will probably be easier to use with a wider variety of gimbals, including smaller and more compact ones. But as terrible early noughties banned Blazing Squad suggested, let's flip reverse it and consider the ergonomic advantages of the bulkier A7 IV. You get way more buttons and dials to customize, which is great for quick flexibility and settings access when vlogging. You also get a gratifyingly girthier grip and emphatically improved ocular experience through a far more comfortable and higher quality electronic viewfinder. These may be less vlog focused advantages, but they certainly help for wider video work and b-roll shooting. Another thing that you likely care about with either vlogging or b-roll shots is the overall look and color of your shots and the flexibility of choice that you have around those things. There's huge scope to shape the aesthetics you're getting with settings tweaks, color corrections, post-production, etc. But more in-camera optionality is always good for flexibility and ready-made choices. Both cameras share the vast majority of options in this area, but the A7 IV gains a few unique additions. We get an 11th picture profile for the A7 IV, which is S Cinetone, a nice option designed to look cinematic with minimal need for color grading. Plus the A7 IV offers 10-bit color depth as well as the 8-bit depth of the A7C, which gives far more scope for color grading and maximizing the use of flat profiles like S-Log. If you're like me, you may want to find a simpler set it and forget it type of look to minimize or eliminate post-production color grading, in which case both cameras still offer plenty of flexibility to achieve that. The A7 IV, however, just has a slightly wider palette of potential permutations in camera. However, another important facet of flexibility is frame rates. Both cameras again share lots of common ground, as you can see with the listings on screen, but the A7 IV 
can shoot at 4K60, albeit only with a 1.5 times crop. Plus, the a7 IV can shoot 4K30 without a crop, unlike the slightly cropped view you get at that frame rate with the a7C. But for almost everything else, they are very evenly matched, so your use case will determine if those incremental wins are important or not. And speaking of incremental wins, Three other small advantages for the A7 IV which are worth mentioning are around redundancy, breathing and pictures. But for once, I'm not referring to an unemployed autoerotic asphyxiation enthusiast artist. Indeed, when I say redundancy, I mean in the recording sense. Since the A7 IV has dual memory card slots, you can set it to record to both simultaneously. So in the low but non-zero probability of a card failure, you have a backup, and that's a nice content creation safety net. When I say breathing, I mean focus breathing, where the size of things change as the focal plane moves. The A7 IV offers focus breathing compensation, which gives you results more akin to a cinema lens and generally looks better for video. It's only supported on a handful of Sony lenses, typically the higher end, more expensive ones, so it falls into the small but worth mentioning bucket for my use case. But how about yours? And when I say pictures, I mean photography capabilities. I rarely take photos. In fact, 95% plus of my work is video, but I know that's not the case for everyone. And I also know the higher megapixel count plus the superior EVF of the a7 IV is going to be an advantage for lots of people who take more photos. At 33 megapixels compared to the 24 of the a7C, you've got significantly more resolution and therefore potential detail and space to crop into. Even in a video first use case like mine, that could be nice for things like time lapse photography turned into video or big static image zooms. But what about vlogging in the dark with those delightfully divergent different sensors? Well, with a face like this, it's probably preferable to the audience, but when it comes to camera capability, the a7C and a7 IV are again pretty evenly matched. There's actually a deep dive video I made to look at the comparative low light performance in great detail, so check that out for more. But the short version is both cameras will do a pretty great job up to around ISO 12800. So both can give you great low light results in typical situations where you have a wide aperture lens and some amount of light. At higher ISO levels, we see the a7 IV retain a bit more detail, sharpness and colour integrity, but the a7C remains marginally cleaner with its footage and less noisy. Check out that detailed video for the full story, and while we could draw out plenty more minor distinctions, some of which I've covered in my first impressions video, we've now covered the areas that I've noticed the most for vlogging and video work so far. Let me know your thoughts and questions down in the comments. I'd say if you are happy using Catalyst or Gimbal stabilization, you aren't likely to need or care about things like 4K60 and 10-bit color depth, and you can manage without the other small quality of life improvements that you get with the a7 IV, the a7C could well be a better value choice. But if one or more of those key differences is important to you, then the a7 IV could be the superior option. And if you enjoyed the video, then a superior option for you could be to like, subscribe, and check out the affiliate links below to help keep the channel alive. However, even more importantly, until next time, take it easy.